Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMemo.com. In this video, I want to teach you about how to add and subtract decimals. And we will start with some easy examples here. Uh, here's 9 tenths minus 2 tenths. The student can just subtract 9 minus 2 and get 7 tenths. And the answer is 0 0.7, 7 tenths. And in this example, it is easy too, because we have hundredths and hundredths. So we can just add 51 and 8 to get 59, and the answer is hundredths. So it is 0 0.59. Now, where many students get in trouble is when we have this kind of problem where we have tenths in one number, and then some other kind of part in the other number, like tenths and hundredths. The mistake they do sometimes is, is just add these as they were just plain numbers. 7 plus 5 equals 12, okay? I'm showing here that this is very wrong. And uh, I want to prove it to you by using fractions. 7 tenths, like this, and 5 hundredths. Now, if you remember from fraction math, you, we are not allowed to add these fractions like that. They have to have the same kind of part. The, same denominator here before you can add. And so to make this to have the denominator 100, we make it to be 70 over 100. And now we can add, so it's 75 hundredths, or as a decimal, it is 0 0.75, written like that, something like that. Now, let's say we had a student that had this misconception of adding these plain numbers on the right of the decimal point. Wouldn't they think that the answer to each of these problems would be 0 0.14? They would ask 8 plus 6 equals 14 each time. And yet, none of these have the answer of 0 0.14. And um, I want to show you a little trick that will help you in adding decimals or subtracting. And we can make these decimals to be the same kind of part. Here we have 8 thousandths and 6 tenths. It's kind of like apples and oranges, you cannot just add the 6 and 8. But we can make them the same kind of parts by making them to be of equal length. Here's three decimal digits, and here, if we make this to be 600, thousands, then we have thousands and the thousands. You can add in your head 8 and 600, to get 608, and it has to be thousands. Okay. Here, using the same trick, I have here hundredths, and then six tenths, I'll make this to have hundreds, like this, 60 hundreds. Now they are, the decimals are of the same length, so to speak, or same kinds of parts. I can add 8 plus 60 is 68, and hundreds. And here, they are already the same kind of parts, tenths and tenths. So now I can just add 8 and 6 equals 14, 14 tenths. But that is more than one whole, so my answer is 1.4, not 0.14. Now you could ask, now what kind of problem? Is there any problem that would have an answer 0 0.14? This would be 14 hundredths. So yes, there is. It is 6 hundredths, or I'm sorry, 8 hundredths and 6 hundredths. This one now has the answer of 0 0.14. Let's go on here. Some subtractions. 1 minus 48 hundredths. Think of the one as hundred hundredths. Okay? You can show it by putting zero or one point zero zero. And now we have hundred minus forty-eight. You can do that in your head, and we get fifty-two hundredths. Similarly here you have one whole and then some thousandths. So let's make this think of this as thousand thousandths. And uh, then you can subtract mentally, and we should get 279,000. Lastly, I want to show you a problem where we use column addition. These numbers, maybe you don't want to add them in your head anymore. We will use column addition and write them under each other. And you've been taught the rule of that the decimal points have to line up. Okay? And when the decimal points are made to line up, then automatically our ones and tens and hundreds and thousands, each place value, they will line up. And that's exactly what needs to be done. Okay? 
Now, well, I've written these. Now I can add zeros here to the empty places, and that is the same as making the all the decimals to be thousands, to have the same length, so to speak. Okay, and then add in each place value in the own column. There's a carry here, like that, and the decimal point goes here. The answer. 